Have you ever craved something so much that you once like, once you quickly get it, you realize that it wasn't just, it wasn't worth it? Like you get nervous talking to that like cute guy or gal, finally putting all that work into the dating process, only to quickly realize the reason that they've been single for so long was because they were just a terrible human being. That happens, but with cars. I'm Alex, Alex at FI on Instagram, and today we're gonna to be talking about the opposite of the Miata, the antithesis of the Porsche 911, the yin to some of the best cars ever made. No way, Jose, today we're gonna to be talking about the cars in our lives that did the exact opposite of make us happy. These are the ones that just didn't live up to the hype. And if you're just jumping into one of these videos, ow, ow, hey, hello. Hola, I'm Alex, and if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension for your underwhelming car that you're now stuck with because you're now upside down because you took a loan out on it and now you have negative equity and you don't know what that means, so you go to the credit union to figure out what that means and they tell you that you just have to keep the car forever, you can still get cool wheels, tires, and suspension. Just pick them up from fitmentindustries.com and that'll make whatever car you no longer want slightly cooler. It's pretty cool. And if you haven't actually heard yet, we've officially launched our very own wheel company, Artist of Art Formed Wheels. It's a monoblock deco directional wheel company, which means they're designed directionally and they mirror the proper side on both sides of the car. Very, very cool thing that we're super proud of. We'd love to see if you guys uh, enjoy them. And of course, check them out below. That's like the whole thing. I'm really excited because they weigh like nothing. Pretty cool. Now, for the soggy fries and the cold popcorn of cars, we take a look at the sports cars that predominantly promised us something. People like you and people like me, some sort of experience. But at the end of the day, they didn't do that, all right? They were like a M. Night Shyamalan movie of a car. Whether that was through pure power, speed, driving experience, or commitments in technology or styling that just didn't make it to the final production model because that happens. And no, we aren't gonna touch on cars that we didn't like just because it's fun, like the Toyota Supra or the BMW Supra, whatever it is that you'd like to say, because that's, that's, more, that's more of an opinion. We're talking about the cars that truly broke our heart and then posted about it afterwards, and what better place to start than with the classic, the car that was iconic, the car that was supposed to change the game and bring us back to the nostalgic roots of Mazda, the RX-8. When the RX-8 was initially debuted into the world, people were stoked. It was a successor to the RX-7, and we'd finally have something that was born back into the new world with new technology and new stuff. Mazda had new money from Daddy Ford, who had a controlling interest in the Japanese brand from a buy-in in 1996, which gave him a little bit of extra funds almost a decade later to start doing something fun. Mazda also saw the sports car interest rejuvenated in the late 90s and into the early 2000s, which meant it was a great time to bring back a rotary RX series sports car to the U.S. market because they thought that this was the best time to do it and they were going to do it better than ever before except for the fact that it wasn't a good idea. It was a bad idea. It was very, very bad. All right. The RX-8 that was released was actually pretty incredible out of the gate, but the hype didn't last all but like 30,000 miles. Cars were finding themselves immediately back in for repair to the damn ECU alarms going off and ECU flashes causing the injectors not to actually put enough oil in for lubrication, which was a huge issue with the actual motor. However, in addition to that, dealerships were actually misdiagnosing some of the engine failures and essentially just replacing it with a new motor when the failure that was actually occurring had nothing to do with replacing the motor. Now, the remand engine that went back in was ended up being remanufactured by a company by the name of Caterpillar, who didn't really understand the QA and QC checks and ultimately resulted in extremely low rebuild quality and specifications. And those motors, those remand motors, made their way back into circulation for motors from dealerships and they would ultimately get put back into these RX-8s that didn't actually need a whole new engine rebuild. And the vicious cycle of poor experience plagued these cars because of the remand engines and the new ones. And while we don't have to go into the super weak Apex Seals poor cooling system and its allergy to forced induction, because we can't do it, the car simply didn't survive long enough for people to love it. When Ford got stuck in the water in 08 and sold the rest of its controlling interest in Mazda, the car would ultimately also be put to bed. And people just kind of moved on from it. They just they still own them, but they just you own them because they're unreliable. It's kind of exactly like the RX-7. The hype died. And sorry, Gels, I still want to see yours built, but like it's, 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 you're up, you're going uphill of snow, no salt. On the other side of the fence, there was the classic but oh too early brand new Acura. NSX, all right, that just didn't live up to the hype. We all know the old school generation, the classic, the iconic, the now somehow $130,000 Japanese supercar killer. 
I remember when those cars were 30 grand. The first generation NSXs were something special and truly planted Honda as a brand that could do it all if it truly wanted to. And after its introduction in 1991, automotive enthusiasts looked to Honda not only as a brand that could provide affordable performance in a platform unlike anything else out there, it could also compete with some of the most untouchable names in the industry, essentially slapping the faces of the exotic car industry time and time again, year over year, and planting itself similar to Ford during its days of the GT40. Like Honda had a good name. They didn't mess around. And so when Honda and Acura teased at the thought of reintroducing a second generation into the world, people lost their minds, all right? The thoughts and nostalgia that ran through the hearts and minds of all damn near millions of enthusiasts just sparked. It ignited, all right? You ever see those weird commercials where they show the explosion of intimacy? It's like that, okay? And let me just say, if you want a car to really overhype, if you really want to overhype a car, let it sit in limbo rumor mill for like 10 years. And that's practically what Acura slash Honda did. 2007, Acura said they'd make an NSX for 2010, and then it was shut down in 2008. Can't imagine why. Then the HSV 010 GT car, where they insinuated a potential road car variant that was going to be the rebadged NXX, was teased and then halted because it never happened. Then in 2011, they officially announced a production car. Then it wasn't heard of again. Then it was unveiled at the 2012 North American International Auto Show. And it stayed this time. And while the production car came three years later and came with a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6 with three electric motors, all wheel drive, 600 horsepower, and a nine speed dual clutch, which is like everything you could possibly want in a car, it fell on damn near zero sales. The car itself is fantastic, a performer of every second and is valued to be a functional car that should carry the NSX name in all of the right places. But it just didn't hit the market the same way as the first gen did. It wasn't just, it was the nostalgia wasn't there. The supporters of the NSX didn't feel it. And they saw the price and the six figure car where it would compete with entry level supercars would, where it would perform marginally better for the most part with the risk of failure on a new platform. And while the platform carried technological advancements like its predecessor, the interior had mountains of plastic and not enough exotic to convince those oil lovers to jump into a Honda versus something like a McLaren. The prices have actually dropped dramatically almost into the R8 region, to which a few people have picked them up. But that's all post-hype, and we will likely only see movement on this new gen NSX for people like us when it's like a hell of a lot cheaper. The hype was so good on the NSX, and then when it was released at the price point that it was at, it was too far away for mostly anyone that truly loved the car. But another brand that was in there that held the hot potato for just a touch too long would be our boys and girls over at the Chrysler facility. Thank God they just now stuff big ass motors into Dodges because that seems to really work out for them. But we're gonna be talking about the good old, the classic, the Chrysler Crossfire, okay? It had high hopes when initially teased at the early 2000s because it was cool looking. Who would have thought aggressive, flared coupe car coming from the domestic brand, which is essentially nothing more than a rebadged Mercedes-Benz R170, a car that won North America Car of the Year in 1997 and made it to top 10 best list for car driver for that year. It should do well, like it had all the right recipes and it should have just been fine. But it wasn't fine, all right? The Crossfire, however, wasn't inherently really any good, like at all. Dealers had a 230 day supply of the model by 2005, whereas Chrysler actually ended up selling the car on overstock.com, which brings us into our sponsor. Just kidding, we don't do that. Our boy Clarkson didn't really enjoy it either, slamming the interior, performance, and the fact that people should just go buy the Mercedes instead. Why would you pick a Chrysler over a Mercedes? Just get the Mercedes, right? And he did say the back end looked a little bit like a dog pooping. So not sure Chrysler is much of a fan of that, but hey, at least Chrysler tried something. It just ultimately didn't end up working. There was a lot of new gen sports cars trying to come into the woodwork in early 21st century. Most of them failed. And last but not least, you can't go without stating a car that probably no one here cares about or would likely ever own, to be completely honest, because it's from a time past, but you have to talk about it, okay? And to the three people out there that thought about slamming these and making a cool, unique car, don't. The DeLorean DMC would likely go on paper as one of the most significant cars that come out of the 20th century that was a colossal failure and truly did not live up to the hype, okay? The brand itself featured so much noise, drama, and overall negativity and press that the DeLorean would likely never see any success anyway, all right? But there was a chance for a brief period of time for that DeLorean DMC to truly do something cool. And the DMC was touted to actually be a supercar with supercar par performance that looked pretty decent. 
And then when it was released, it fell right on its ugly little mug. The zero to 60 was 10 seconds. And a brand that would rather behave in some illegal activities, it's actually a really good story, than retain the warranty agreements of their favorite car, it just didn't really pan out for them. And it turned into more of a hobby than an actual car company. And people that ended up buying them were very, very upset. Like truly. There are lots of cars out there that never really did that well. But for you, which one sticks out the most? Let us know below. And of course, if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com for your unhypey cars or otherwise. We don't judge. Just throw them on the ground if you don't like them. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries, and we will see you later. Goodbye.